Hey there, internets. I'm Michael, and this is Two Can Play That Game. Bringing you another review. So, the game we're reviewing today is No Dice. Now, this is a little card game about laying cards where you'll be overlapping and adjacent to other cards. It has kind of a dominoes feel, but with cards that are sort of dice shaped. Um, and this was a Kickstarter back in 2015. It did successfully fund. However, the game hasn't hit retail stores yet. But if you are interested in this game, you can reach out to No Dice Game um, on Twitter and they'll be potentially able to send you a copy. Um, I think Kickstarter price was £12 for the basic game. I don't know what they'll be selling it at now or if they do definitely still have some left. They are also working on at the moment is they've got a game called QUOD, so Quad, that is available through print and play. Um, so if you're interested in this, you might want to also check that out. And then they are also developing a game called 60, which will be their next Kickstarter. Um, so if I happen to get any more news or a copy of that, of course, I'll let you know more details about it. What is No Dice then? Well, as you can see, the box really gives you no clue other than telling you there's no dice, which is very apt, there isn't. So if we open this up, you can see it's just filled with these cards. And these cards, as you can tell, have kind of a dice-like effects. So the hexagon cards, and the way the game works is you'll have a hand of seven cards, and each turn you'll get to play a card. There's also in here four special power cards that can do things like swap your hand with another player, double your next turn score, etc. Welcome to the table for how to play No Dice. So we have here an example of a card. So you can see we've got three different sections of card. And you'll have special power cards that will look something like this that tell you on them what they do. And the rule book does contain more on this. So first thing, take all your cards and shuffle them up. Then deal seven cards to each player. Then you're gonna to wanna to put the rest of the cards on the table within reach of all players to be your draw pile. So pick your first player randomly and then they'll start by playing a card from their hand. So let's say I played this three five and blank down here. And then once I've played a card, I then draw my hand back up to seven cards, which will most of the time mean just drawing a single card. Then it's the next person's go. And they have these cards here. The options they would have to play is they could play their action card, or they can play one of these dice cards. Now the card you play, you can either play so that it is adjacent to another card with the number matching. So I wouldn't be able to play it adjacent like so because the three doesn't match the five. Or you can play it overlapping another card. And when you do that, you have to match the number you are overlapping. So I could either overlap on the five or overlap on the three. Additionally, if you had a situation where you have, say, these two fives next to each other, I could play this double five and three on top of those overlapping both these cards. But what you can't do is play a card overlapping another card whereby you cover a single segment with two different segments. So that is not a valid move. Also, of course, here I would be able to play this card like so, so it's adjacent to both of these rather than on there. However, I wouldn't be able to play like so, because although this is adjacent to that, that isn't. 
And again, of course, I wouldn't be able to cover this five because that three does not match the five underneath that. So let's say I chose to play this card here. The way the scoring works is that you'll get the number of dots shown on the card you're playing, always. So here, that would be 13. Then you get the number of dots of any segment you've covered up. Then you get number of points for any diamonds adjacent to the card you played. So for instance, if I play this card here, I would get 13 for the card. I haven't covered anything up, so I don't get any points for that. But I would get five points for this adjacent diamond. However, if I played the card overlapping, like so, I would get the 13 points for this card, the five points for the diamond I've overlapped, and then the three points that are adjacent to the card I've played. So we'll say I played this, which would get me 21 points. I would then draw another card, at which point it would be the next player's turn and they could play again. So let's imagine a situation where a few more cards have been played like so. And I could choose to play this card covering up this two, which would get me the nine points for this card, the two points for the one I'm covering up, plus the three points adjacent. So that'd be 14 points for doing that. Or I could place it covering up this two, which would get me the same number of points plus another four, because I'm also adjacent to that four there. Or I could play it covering up this four. And that would then get me the nine points for this card, the 10 points that are on this card because I'd be covering up that four, so that's 13. And then I'm adjacent to this four and this two, so that's 19. But then I'm also adjacent to these two here, so that's 21 points. The game will proceed with each player playing a card and then drawing back up until either all players have had to pass, which is one option you can do rather than play a card, you can pass. Now, you could choose to do this for tactical reasons, but more likely you'll be doing it because you're unable to find an available move with the cards you have. If all players have passed in a round, then that would then be the end of the game. The other way the game can end is once all the cards have been used and played out onto the table. Let's see, normally I would talk about artwork, but as you can see, there's not really much artwork to go on on there. On these cards, the artwork of the dots, it's very basic. It, it's doing what it needs to do to look like a dice. But beyond that, there's really not much to talk about. The special power cards are very bland. They could have done something to make those a bit more interesting. But it doesn't hurt the game in any way what they have done. So let's talk about components. Well, the box is not great. It's not gonna last particularly long. It's obviously not an expensive box and they've tried to do this all as cheaply as possible, obviously, because it, it, it has been a small volume game. So they haven't been able to take advantage of a lot of bulk buys necessarily. But this box is doing its job, which is holding, of course, the only component, these cards. Now, unfortunately, the quality of these cards could be better. It's not, they're not hugely bad, but they're not great. Um, they have this kind of waxiness of them, which means they're very, very slippery. So when, of course, you're laying them all out, what you then end up with is them kind of shifting and sliding, and then it's really hard to tell what lines up and what doesn't. So if they'd made the cards maybe slightly heavier stock and also more of a mattish finish um, that had a bit more grip to it, that would have helped alleviate some of that, um, which would just make it a bit easier to play. Now, I've played this quite a few times over the last week since I've got it. The cards are holding up okay. 
to use. I think if you were to talk about years of play, I think these really would wear and fade over that sort of time period. Now, let's get on to what's most important and what the designer themselves is proud of, and that is the mechanisms in this game. So this is a puzzle game. It is all about puzzle strategy, seeing what is going on and trying to make the best move available, as well as potentially trying to set up moves that will score you the big points. And it does that. It does it really well. I mean, this is a genre of game, this kind of abstract puzzle game, especially small cards, that there are a lot of out there. Now, is this one particularly better than those? I would say it's very high up there. It is a fun, enjoyable, mind straining game. You will puzzle, you will try and work out the moves, you will go, ah, oh, you just beat me to that, or ah, oh, I was setting up a move there. It is a fun little card game, but it's not going to change your life. You know, the special powers that are in there don't feel like they really change the game enough to... I mean, if you took those out, the game would still feel like the same game and be as enjoyable as a game. And having them in there, they all just kind of, because they're so few and they're so valuable, you tend to hold on to them waiting for the moment to use them. Which is good in a way, but it's bad in a way. And one thing that I think they could have done with this that would have been interesting and potentially better is have cards that are multi-purpose. And what I mean by that is rather than have these special power cards that you play and that's all you can use them for, have a card that has dots on etc but is also potentially a special power and you choose whether to use it for the big points that it might be worth depending on how good a power it is or as that power. And I think that would really enhance this game. Now how you would do that graphically with the cards is a bit debatable. Um, one idea I had was simply putting a circle in the middle that indicates, that has a brief thing of what that special power is. Um, another idea is that you do one section of the card that will be the special power section. So the say you can use this card for what it is or for the special power. Um, but there's definitely ideas to bandy around with. And if, Andrew, if you're watching this, um, as I say, that, that would be something I think could really enhance this game by giving that extra choice of, oh, well, I could double my next score or I could just get 10 points for this single card. And I think that could really enhance the game. It would also then mean there are more special power cards that could come up throughout the game. So you're more concerned about them, have more of a thought of them being there. And each time someone does get one of those in their hand, it's going to give them that con conundrum of, well, am I better off just using it for the points or for the power? So, yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on that. Now, I have really enjoyed this game, and would I have gone out and bought it had I not been given this? Well, I'm not a big abstract gamer, so potentially I wouldn't. However, having it now, I am glad that I have it because I'm not a big abstract gamer. This actually fills kind of a void in my collection really nicely of this kind of midway, easily portable card game that is that strategy and it also is really good for me because the whole fact of you're drawing a hand of cards but then you're deciding what you'll do gives that really nice mix of strategy and luck which if you're a fan of this channel you know I like and so this does that really well. So who would want to buy this? Well I think most people would enjoy this game. If you really like your abstract card games, this is definitely one to look out for and try and get. If you're looking to get an abstract card game, it's definitely one for you to potentially try. Um, as you know, I am an advocate of try before you buy. But if you prefer your games to have a lot of theme and to be really engaging and in-depth from the theme, from 
you know, just the atmosphere of a game, this isn't going to be the game for you. But it is a good little game. Well done, Andrew, on this. So the final thing I need to cover on this is can two play that game? Two can play that game. Um, I've played this with variable numbers so far. Um, the box itself says it's for two plus. But obviously you only have, I think it's 60 cards in the deck. So that's kind of a very much a limiting factor on the number of players you can use. If you're playing with two people, obviously you have much greater control over the table where the cards are being played and trying to build up combinations. So it can enhance the strategy level playing this two player. If you play with the higher level, I think the highest um, I went was five, it did start to really have downtime issues a bit. And so I'd probably recommend playing this between two and four players would be my recommendation. You can go more than that and maybe four is a bit bad on downtime. It kind of depends who you're playing with and how bad they are for analysis paralysis, which is spending forever deciding what to do. So that is my thoughts on No Dice. Of course, if you've enjoyed this video, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel, subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends and family. And do also check us out on social media, on Facebook and on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.